If there's one style of crossover music that creates more interest than any other, it's when rock musicians get together with classical orchestras. For a lot of musicians, for a lot of fans, this has got to be the ultimate. What could be bigger, more theatrical, more luxuriant than standing in front of a complete symphony orchestra? I should be into this. I want to find out if I am. And just so we get this straight at the beginning, I'm not talking about orchestras playing souped up rock medleys. Come on everybody, rock music. La 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 la. Or like the Estonian entry to the Eurovision Song Contest. In Estonia, this is how we do the pop music, with the violin and viola. I'm talking about this. Rock group meets orchestra. It's a thing I really should be into. Studies show that heavy metal and classical music fans, well, they're basically the same kind of person. They attract listeners with similar personalities. Play the ride of the Valkyries to a heavy metal fan and you might be talking their language. Lure a classical muso into Stairway to Heaven and with that guitar so at the beginning, they might be headbanging by the end. <laughs> It turns out it wasn't really until 1969 that Deep Purple made this a thing. Led by their keyboardist John Lord, they created Concerto for Group and Orchestra and performed it at the Royal Albert Hall in London with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra conducted by Malcolm Arnold. Orchestras and rock bands were running with the devil. Next up, 1973 progressive rock. Rock groups that wanted to join all their tracks together so it added up to something man. Concept albums also used orchestras apparently, like Rick Wakeman's Six Wives of Henry VIII. Six Wives, Six Movements, Anne Boleyn gets the chop halfway through. Not really. Here's Rick talking about what was involved when he did it all again in 2009. You can have a 72 piece orchestra, 7 piece band, 40 piece choir, guests, dancers, effects. 72-piece orchestra, 40-piece choir, 7-piece band, and effects? Yeah, like a 72-piece orchestra, 40-piece choir, 7-piece band is not enough. Anyway, this is the gig. Rick, who probably feels an affinity with Henry, having had almost as many wives, appeared wearing what looked like a crusader's cape, even though crusaders and Henry VIII really don't go together, trimmed with Father Christmas fur and bearing a fleur-de-lis, despite the fact that the fleur-de-lis is principally associated with the Catholic French royal family. Henry VIII hated Catholics and wouldn't have been seen dead wearing one, but hey, let's not get bogged down in details. In the years since prog rock, Classic meets rock has gone epic. Subsequent famous sorties include Emerson, Lake and Palmer. <laughs> Moody Blues. and Progol Harum, with the leader of the orchestra very obviously wearing fluorescent yellow earplugs because he couldn't stand the noise. And a string of others. In fact, this is now so established that in Germany there's even a touring show called Rock Meets Classic. Not to be confused with Classic Meets Rock, which is a completely different show, there's probably also a rock classic meets out there somewhere. Oh yes, so there is. No, there isn't. I made that up. Okay, so is rock meets classic a bat out of hell or a stairway to heaven? Well, I've got to tell you, I rather like it, but it is a style with one or two problems. The first tinty one is most rock music is in one rhythm. Four beats to the bar. Doesn't vary and you've got a drummer pumping the beat out. Now, if you're a conductor and there's a drummer in your setup, you better make sure you're friends with that drummer because it doesn't really matter what you do, he or she is who the musicians are going to follow. So when rock meets classic, conductor meets redundancy on your left with the sight of the conductor trying to look hit while basically counting to four. One, two, three, 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 four. During the rehearsal, it scared this guy so much he appears to have pooed himself. The second and biggest problem by far can be summarised in one word, balance. This is the sound of an orchestra. Mm -hmm. 
this is the sound of a rock band. One of these sounds is much louder than the other. There are hardly any classical instruments that are going to cut through against a rock band. It's why in 2000, when German heavy metal rock band the Scorpions teamed up with the Berlin Philharmonic, they ditched wind instruments and just went with strings and brass. But even the Scorpions have got a harp in there. Scorpions, let's just go over this again. Here's the sound of a harp, and here's the sound of a rock band. Good luck with that harp. So if the band just turns up expecting to do what they normally do, this is going to go wrong. If the classical musicians don't respect the way the band works, it will fall apart. The feel of rock classical crossover abounds with examples of it not really working. But if everyone gives a little and goes for it, yeah, this can be epic. I'm a classical musician. Do I get heavy metal? You know, those scientists got it right. I do. For a start, it's got some of the greatest lyrics of all time. War Pigs by Black Sabbath. Generals gathered in their masses, just like witches at black masses. Or as it was sung during the panic buying around coronavirus, people gather in their masses, buying paper for their asses. <laughs> so until next time, rock on. <laughs>